Oh, it's thick and juicy. Mm-mm-mm, just the way I like them. Yeah. G'day folks, this is the Coffee Bush Kid in Central Vic. I'm on the outskirts of a notable town. And it was just up there somewhere, the wave of the finger, where I got my new guinea shilling ages ago. Now I'm back out with my uh, recovery speed at 8, sensitivity at 19, and we have this in the ground. I'm thinking maybe it's a thrippence, and it is just down in there. Oh, you want to see that? It does look like there's a square hole, so potentially it's a Chinese coin. But it might just be a round hole and be another New Guinea shilling. Could be a washer too. Yep, Chinese coin. Was not expecting that. That's cool. Let's clean it up and we'll find out what we've got. We are back. It's got some ripper detail in it. Now this one, I'm not going to pronounce the emperor's name, but it is, or it dates from 1736 to 1795. So right there, folks, is a coin older than a cartwheel penny in Australia. That's the way I always like to look at them. Pretty amazing. Uh, you know, that's, that's close coming up to, uh, uh, as he does quick, you know, over 300 years old. Yeah, there, yeah, getting close to that, anyway. So, that's a pretty cool find and one that I was not expecting. So let's keep going and we'll find out what else we can find. Sixteen, seventeen. It's only one bar down. We uh, have this just there. I don't know what it is. I'm going to say it's probably a button. But in a moment, we will find out. Well, there we go. There's, that's a nice way of presenting it to you. Here we go. Oh, you ripper! This is the top of a buckle and then there's something on there this is heavy and when i clean it up we will find out what that is that's a ripper well, we're back and i was wrong what i was feeling was the all the crud and dirt that was on it but it is lead filled hence its weight see the two little luggy bits there that have been bent over don't know what this was off, but it's a beautiful piece of brass or bronze, but yeah, heavy with the lead in behind it. That is an unusual find. There you go, you saw it come out of the ground. Let's see if we can find something else, eh? Well, out of that hole, 21 to 23, I was expecting a thrippence. I got this. Now, first I thought, oh, maybe it's a buddy cufflink or something. Don't know. Really weird. But when I, and get my magnifying glass up, had a look at that under the magnifying glass, there we are. I can see Elfray down the bottom. And in the little box up the top, it says S-I-L. 
but I'm pretty much happy to say that's actually silver. Well, we even see it maybe a bit better that way. Don't know. Anyway, that's what I found. And I haven't gone very far into the site. So, you know, we're a Chinese coin and a piece of silver up. That's not bad. Now, last time we were out here, so we, Petey Uar and I were out here, I reckon we found one of these as well. Now, this is an aluminium religious medallion. And you can make out there someone, I'm not going to say who that may represent. There is writing around the edge, but it's very, very corroded. But that's an interesting little one. We've found one of these before. Different design, I think, from memory. Still a cool find to find. Find to found. Anyway, you know what I mean. Same hole. Should always check for other signals. We got that. That is a glorious little knob. Doorknob. That's a really brilliant one, that one. It's a shame it's damaged. I reckon that's a ripper. So always have a swing over your, the hole before you fill it in. Save you digging it out again. There's where I got the knob and the medallion. Here's my next signal. I am trying to get into the shade because it's bloody hot. It's late afternoon, but it's hot. But then you get a signal. Like that. Don't know what it is. I haven't seen it yet. I've only dug the plug over. Though. Imprint. And that. Oh, is an aluminium bloody lid. See, they give a good signal, don't they? Yeah. This is why I dig it. Beautiful signal. And there we go. That is part of a pocket watch. Might be something written on there. Who knows? Good signal, though. You wouldn't leave that in the ground. And, oh, funnily enough, we haven't. That's the hole that we just got the watch part out of. And then I went and found this in there as well. Now, first things first, that's a cuff link. Until I, you look at it first, I think, oh, yeah, rove and rivet, but the back's, this part's too big, and why has that got a cutout? It's got a cutout so the Lee, the buttonhole for the cuff link uh, can go through nice and easy. The cuff link in a rubbish pile. Bloody amazing what you can find. I'm loving this. Uh, well, you know I love the six inch coil, but uh, putting the recovery speed up to eight, dropping my sensitivity back to 19, it's yeah, and, and I'm also. Uh, discriminated out to 15 so 15 half sovereigns and above and we're pulling out bloody cuff links that's pretty cool that is a brass or bronze cup hook so it's 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 met with a bit of foul play but they are just a beautiful casting amazing what they used to do back in the day just beautiful. I also got that. I got that. Heaven knows. And that, which is a hammer. It's a good, sturdy little hammer, too. But, uh, yeah. Amazing what you can find in the ground, hey? Let's see what we've got. We had a, a 21, 22 in the ground. Now that the plug's out, it is... Still fairly constant in saying that it's there. Where are you? Oh! 
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Ah. How good is this? There we go. Ah. What's that say? 1936. 1936 reference. That will be George the 5th. There he is. I'll clean that up later. That was what we wanted to know. 1936. Oh, what's the time now? I've only been out here probably about an hour. Uh, it's nearing time when I need to go again. But... Chinese coin, threepence, another piece of sterling silver or silver of some description. We got a bloody cuff link. And this is an area that Pete and I went over it fairly thoroughly. But yeah, I'm loving what I've done with the with the settings. To be able to pull us a, a little threepence out like this. It's a bloody ripper. Let's see what else we get before we get back to the Ute. Let's keep going. I've only just switched you off and I'm switching you back on again. Because that's where we got the thrippence. You can't leave that behind. So, let's, let's have a look in the ground what we've got. Ugh, there we go. It's out. Make life a little easier. Just down there. Are we going to say it's another threepence? I would. Ah. Oh. <coughs> Forty-four. So it's George the the sixth. So we got a George the fifth and a George the sixth. Bloody hell! This thing loves thrippences. No wonder I call it the thrippence magnet. Just but he draws them out of the ground like a like a cow a cow pat poultice. Anyway, that's bloody brilliant. <laughs> Ah, I know what that is, he says. 
semi-confidently. I half reckon that that's going to be one of the sewing feet of a Singer sewing machine. Well, just to let you know that it is my video. Here we go. Another axe head. This one, this one's got these cheeks down below. It's had a hell of a lot of wear and it's delaminating. But um, yeah, these, you don't often find those cheeks on too many axes. Well, I've stuck this blade in, I've taken a piece out and the signal is still in the ground. Don't know what it is. Oh, I can see something. No, I can't. Oh, yes. Oh, you ripper. Yes, I can see something in the ground. Is it only copper or is it silver-esque? That's George. Might just be a roux. Mmm, that's a bit interesting. I think we'll have to have a bit of a clean up. We'll find out what it is in a tick. Alrighty, there it is. That's a 1944 roux penny. Looks like it's been through a fire and I've just been given the good oil on this place by someone that used to live here that in fact there was a house up there on the flat that burnt down I reckon it was a chimney fire so that's why we're finding so much stuff around and some of it looks like it was burnt much like this one did but in the scheme of things we'll take it now I'll film this one because of its weird sound. Sounds like there's a lot going on, but the numbers are nice. You know, one way it's deep, another way it's um, it's shallow. The jury's out. Are we looking at coin spill or singular coin or or not a coin at all? Whatever it is, is there. <clears throat> ah, 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 ah. Is a Bex bottle, but the more important thing is, no, it hasn't got any gold in it. You'd be amazed at how many of these things were filled with gold. Yep, that was it. Just the old Bex bottle. All right, that's still a nice little find, but uh, who knows? One day we might find one with gold in it. I know I've got one at home with my great-grandfather's gold that he panned. And, uh, yeah, I won't be getting rid of that anytime soon, I can tell you. Anyway, nice little find. That uh, wind's really picking up, but here's a cool little find. Just a surface find. There it is. Does anyone know what that is? Well, your time's up. That's a little crucible for smelting gold. I often find them broken like this, but they're always a cool little find. And we are in the gold mining area, and this lets you know it. Now that wind's picking up. I certainly hope it doesn't interfere too much. Look what I've just dug out. It's starting to fall apart already. That's an old-fashioned screwdriver. That's pretty cool, and there was still something else in the hole. And, uh, because there's lots of glass, 
lots of glass. Should have my gloves on. Anyone know what that is? We're about to buddy pull it out. Look at that. That could go with the crucible that we found. They're always a brilliant find, the old picks. Now, you could put a handle on that and just use it for light work in the garden. It'll never come back to, to absolute, but it'd certainly do as a roughie. That's pretty brilliant, that one. Let's see what else is here around here. This really is just one of those places where you, you, know, you run over with the detector, there's lots of signals. Just make yourself comfortable with a pinpointer and your uh, digger of choice and just keep going through. It's one of those spots that just keeps on giving. There's so many metal signals. Um, you know, you never know what you're going to find. Oh, speaking of which, there's a button. And usually my day's running hard when I show you a button, except look at this one. It's got a spiral. It could well have been off one of Madonna's costumes, I reckon. Not sure. Anyway, I have not got a button like that. It almost looks like it was made out of wire by the way that it's the spirals on it. But that's a little ripper. That can go home into my box of thousands of buttons. Geez, I might give a uh, give a talk on it one day. What do you think, my love? <laughs> we could invite Beck too. Anyway, we'll keep going. It's just one of those things, isn't it? There's the ute, Rolf. I'm walking along the side of the road. I reckon I've got silvers along here. So I'm sort of walking along. There's a little, a little dam there. I thought, oh, I'll walk beside the road. And you get this 31, 32 signal up into 30, oh, you know, 34, flicker 36, really teasing you. And you, oh, that's got to be a token. But I'm right beside the road. And you dig down and plop. Out comes that. Now it looks like I may well have just bloody scraped it. Just. But that uh, that is a token all day long. It's a shame about the bloody cancer on it. But we should potentially clean that up and see what we've got. Oh, it's thick and juicy. Mm -mm -mm. Just the way I like them. Let's clean it up. Rightio, we are back. Now, you can see there's a lady standing there. She has a set of scales. Usually this a date there, I can't see it. The coin itself, or the token itself, is dished. I vaguely recall Peter Uwa telling me of such a particular token. And there's enough writing there to be tantalising. Whether we can find out what it is or not, I'm just going to have to go through my book as a process of elimination. She's my best bet at the moment. The lady with the scales, I can knock out quite a few tokens that don't have that. And then I'll find which one it is. But nonetheless, that is a token coming out of the ground. Rest assured, today is good. Anyway, we'll keep going. There we go. That's a thumping great belt buckle. Now well, that's not uh, metal, but by gee, that underneath it, that is, that was a cool little find. There you go. There we go. There you go. There we go, we're down on my boot, because I'm wearing shorts, and apparently there's a band on my hairy knees. So there it is, 1918 Commonwealth Halfpenny. That's not a bad find. 
is old George, he's a little bit blistered, been through the fire that probably wrecked the house. But that's still pretty cool to find. Yeah, very strange. Sounds, oh, I just spotted something. Yep. Oh, makes your heart sing, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. We best clean that up and find out what it is. 1951. A 1951 Rue Penny for us. It is in fact that. Oh look at look, it's got a pole on the or, um, gearing for a pole on the outside. Yeah, I reckon that's probably off an old chainsaw. Anyway. Good find, got me a little excited. Anyway, keep in mind, always good to fill in some of your day detecting, but remember to fill in all your holes when you're finished. We'll catch you next time.